Greetings, precious people, in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus, and welcome to another segment of this particular broadcast coming to you live right here at 8640 Schnei of our road in Kansas City, Missouri. This is bread from the master's table. We are in the book of Revelation. We'll continue to walk right through it. I think chapter nine is what we're going to be going back to today. Sue Marsh Banks, you got somebody over your shoulder back there. <laughs> somebody, somebody eyeballing you. Hey, something going wrong in your office there. Um, and so we're going to, uh, we're going to be going back there in just a minute. I do have a prayer list I need to get, and I'm hoping that Shirley will be here uh, by the time we get ready to move forward. Uh, again, we've got some, I see Pastor uh, Reverend Jerome Hawkins coming in. Uh, he's got someone with him today. How are you? Right. Amen. Amen. We got, we got some folks in here. Thank you. How are you doing? All right. How are you doing? All right. All right. You, you get one of those every time you come in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we got a full crew in the house today. Uh, my engineer, uh, Sister B. Crawford. Next to her is Minister Jerome Hawkins. And next to him is that fella down there that, oh, well, there's a young lady sitting next to him. <laughs> Sister Pat. Sister Pat. Amen. And next to Sister Pat is Dr. Daryl James. Pastor, yeah, oh yeah, my really good friend. Amen. One of my really good friends. Amen. And son Amen. that needs to have a two shared experience. I welcome it. I welcome it. Lady Pat Harold is sitting next to him, and way over in the corner is Sister Yvonne Fletcher. Vani, we call her. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. And then, of course, uh, on Zoom, we have Suzette March Banks, we have uh, Steve Rowland, we have Sister Tarita, we have Sister uh, Tony Yearby, uh, Jax, my engineer, and Sister Joan Henry. We thank God for all of them. And then we will get our, our Facebook uh, audience when we come back from prayer. Let me, let me pull this prayer list up. As many of you know, our, our dear friend Chester Walker uh, had his wife slip away from him yesterday. Shirley and I were over at the hospital with him. Um, Onita. Mm -hmm. And Jerome, you know Onita yes, intimately. Yes. Yeah, that family, just yeah. a dear, dear family. Uh, Chester Walker is a longtime deacon, precious man. Merit, right? Well, they were together 50 years. Oh, wow. that, that's how long. Wow. Yeah. yeah. He's a Vietnam veteran, by the way. First Air Cav. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he was he was in Nam just a, a year or so before me. But uh, they're just they're just awesome people. Members of our church here. Yes. Uh, and, and, oh yeah, BBU know mm -hmm. them very well yeah. as well, having been a member of Greater Mount Zion. So we thank God for Chester and Onita and that family, their children, grandchildren, uh, and the Fletcher family who had a death in their family not long ago. And Bonnie is here with us today. Uh, Derek Saylor. Um, uh, Jay and I had a chance to go visit with Derek Saylor here some weeks ago. Uh, about time for us to go see him again. Yeah. The deaf and uh, buyer family there in Arkansas. Uh, Pastor Tony Byers, another one of my sons who passed the church here in Arkansas, his wife's sister uh, passed away. And so their hearts are still tender. Carolyn Mills and her family, even though Ira has been gone for several uh, months now, but still, uh, they were married right at 70 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A long time uh, in the high 60s. I can't remember exactly what the year is, but they were. Married a long time, most longer than most people live, mm -hmm. and uh, and so they, their their family um, are still dealing with that. And, and Ira was a trustee here in our church, dear man. Uh, Harold Stevens uh, is home from the hospital. Uh, we be praying for him. His mother was with us last uh, Wednesday. Uh, Joanne Payne, down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
And then Garland Mentor, who's down in Augusta, Georgia. We, we thank God for them as we, uh, as we prepare our hearts to go to prayer. Keep, um, you know, when our loved ones slip away from us, mm -hmm. there's a void yeah. left in our hearts. Yes. And the thing I've discovered in my almost 80 years on the planet mm -hmm. is that you can't rush through death and dying. Mm -hmm. You can't. Uh, you, you can't wave a wand and, uh, and, uh, and that deep ache in your heart goes away. It's not like that. You just have to live. You have to trust God. You have to navigate the pain in the deep place mm -hmm. and, buy and, and, and and hold on to the sweet memories that you have. And uh, If you got picture albums, you might want to peruse them and just remember the times of joy yeah. with your family. And, and uh, by and by. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah by and by. Yeah. It get better. Yeah. 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 My parents and 10 brothers and sisters are all gone. I'm the last of my family. I did the funerals of some of my uh, siblings. Mm -hmm. And I know what that's like. Mm -hmm. But again, by and by, mm -hmm. there's some healing that takes place. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I've discovered is that God would put a tool in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, so that you could help somebody else when they're on that, on that road. Mm -hmm. But letting them know God is able to make all things well. Amen. And we just have to learn to trust wow. him. And, uh, yeah. and, and he, when God is enough, Amen. when he is all right. enough, all right. all we right. can learn to rest in him and navigate life in a very Amen. sweet way. Yes. All right. I see my son, D.L. Lee, is with us. Good to see you, D.L. Praise the Lord for you. Let's bow, everybody. God, our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this grace that you've given to us to where we can not only come before you with adoration, thanksgiving, and praise in our mouths, you have said in your word that we ought to offer the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your name. And you said we ought to do it continuously. And so, Lord, we do. We, we lift our voices and offer that living water that you put on the inside of us back as a sacrificial offering. We trust to be well-pleasing in your sight. And then you've given us, Lord, uh, in this gracious gift of prayer, uh, the ability to intercede on behalf of others. Mm -hmm. And so we pray now for the Walker family. We yes. lift up Brother Chester uh, Jesus. Uh, and his children and grandchildren and Onita's siblings. And we thank you for mm -hmm. the Fletcher family who just uh, finished going through this same kind of deep place. We pray, oh God, for Derek Saylor. We pray for the Deaf family and the Byers family. We pray for the Mills family, for the Stevens family, for JoJo and for Garland and others whose names we did not call and that we know are, are going through. And we just pray that you minister effectively in the lives of each one. Lift up the hung down head. Let the weak say I'm strong and the discovers be encouraged. Let the sick say I'm well in Jesus' name. And Lord, we speak your name to every situation, to every circumstance. We speak the name of Jesus. And you said in your word that there's none other name under heaven given among men. Right. And we must be saved. And so we thank you for the glory of your name, the power of your name, the deliverance that's in your name. Healing virtue flows in your name. And Lord, we thank you for it. Thank you for the use of it that Thank you've Lord. given to your born-again believers, your children, that you've adopted into your family by way of Jesus Christ, and you've given us that glory. So we bless you, and we praise you, we honor you, and rejoice in you. We ask you now, oh God, to go with us and stand by us as we move back into the book of Revelation for today. Uh, we ask yep. you just to open up every heart and mind. Yes, sir. Give us to be able to glean something uh, we trust to be beneficial to us in our everyday yes, lives. Yes, As we walk this walk down here on the ground, help our joy to be full, even in the middle of our storms and trials. Yeah. You've given us a word that yeah. there's no temptation taking us, but such as is common to man. Yes, yes. said, but you're faithful who will not suffer <laughs> us to be tempted above that we're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape yes, that we sir. might be able to bear it. Grandma said it like this, mm -hmm. the Lord won't put no more on you than you can bear. Amen. And we Hallelujah. thank you yeah. for that word of assurance. Faithful. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Jesus, Amen. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. There is my...
Watch out, dog. Come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dear wife just came in. Mm -hmm. And if it's there, that means we can bear it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and you know, there there's another there's another piece to it. We're gonna we're gonna come out on the other side. That's Amen. that's the mind of God toward us. But in the middle of it, God is up to something. Mm -hmm. mm. James said, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into divers, mm -hmm. temptations, or different kind of storms and trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let patience have a perfect work that you might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter 5, mm -hmm. verses 3, 4, and 5. We glory in our tribulation also. Mm -hmm. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Hallelujah. And hope make it not a shame for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost yes, which is given unto us. So God has a way of building us through our storms and trials. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. And all of us who are in the house of faith have been called according to the purpose of God. Uh, yeah, it just, it's the air is just going out of the Cylinder, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get started with me, devil. <laughs> oh man! All right, we're gonna we're gonna have Shirley come. She's in. My dear wife, say amen for us. She comes amen. to amen. give us whatever the Lord has put in our heart for today. And there we go. Amen. 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 <laughs> Oh, it's still morning. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this this uh, little song just been kind of rolling around in my head. I heard it the other day. So uh, just want to share because no matter what we have or what we don't have or um, what situation or circumstance, I think we can all say that probably Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. No doubt about that. Amen. Um, Amen. We, um, yeah. Amen. I mean, we're going through, and we may not even see him, but because we have our salvation, it really is the best place to be in the world, no matter Amen. where you are, mm. what's going mm. on with you. Yes, mm. If you've got Christ, then that's mm. what matters eventually because we're going to get out of whatever circumstance we are here on earth yeah. eventually yeah. and then yeah. where we end up is is the most important part so anyway Lord. jesus is the best thing oh yeah i've had my share of life's ups and downs but god's been good to me and those downs, they've been so few. Well, you would probably say, girl, then you are lucky. <laughs> but that's not really, really what's true. There's just never been a time in my life that God, didn't see me through All right. mm. so if anyone yes. would ever write my life story oh yes for whatever reason I don't know there might be All right. All right. Well, the Lord will be there between each line of pain and any glory. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. Because Jesus is the best thing. Oh, Jesus is the best thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus is the best thing yeah, yeah, yeah. that ever happened Jesus. to me. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, if anyone would ever write my life story for whatever reason. I don't know, but there might be 
<laughs> oh, the Lord will be there. Sing, Shirley. Yes, 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 yes. Line of pain and any glory, glory. Because Jesus is the best thing. Oh, yes. Oh, my Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. he is the best thing. Oh, Jesus is the best thing. Lord, you are the very, very mm. best thing. Oh, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. I don't know about you, but that ever happened to me. Hallelujah. All right. Jesus. Man, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. Shirley. Thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Yes, sir. Jesus is the best thing yeah. that ever happened to me. I don't know about Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. I agree. I concur. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I concur. And it's not a little song, sister. Should oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we say just a little song? Just a little something? We have Patrice uh, Anderson joining us on Zoom. So we've got a really good crew on, on Zoom. Diana Scott, good morning, all, she says on Facebook, Barbara Caldwell, good morning, family, Vic Bobo, good morning, he says, Teresa Shelby, good morning, family, D.L. Lee, good morning, he pulling double duty, I see him over here on Zoom, too, <laughs> uh, Reginald Taylor, uh, good morning, family. Donna Jones, good morning, EMBC family. God bless you. I have to be really careful with this thing because I always seem to lose all my people. Uh, Tracy Reed is watching. Tracy was on Zoom here a minute ago behind Jax. So they're out at the stadium. Erica Cox, the evangelist. Good morning, Daddy Bishop and family. Blessings to your daughter. Chris Townsend, hey, Chris, haven't seen you, boy, for a while. You better come stick your head in the door, man. We miss you at the house. Good morning. Happy Wednesday to all of the EMC family. Uh, have a great, wonderful, awesome, <laughs> blessed day. Mario Burnett White, uh, the chairman of the board. Uh, I trust you're back in, on Kansas City Dirt, uh, Deacon Brother. They've been vacationing in Florida, so he, uh, I trust you're back. Uh, Juanita McGill, good morning, Ebenezer family. Deandra Crosdale Hines, way down in Georgia. Good morning, everyone. Have a blessed day. No, I mean Texas. Deandra is in Texas. Uh, Octavia Carr says good morning. Marcia Matt Jackson. Good morning, the EMBC family. That's my youngin' right there. Uh, Teresa says, amen, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. Chris Townsend says, Jesus Christ is the best thing in my life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. My youngest son, John Allen Frazier, is watching. Good morning, John says. Florencio Reyes. Good morning, EMBC family. Andre Moore. Good morning, Pastor. Hello, Dr. Andre. <clears throat> Blessings to you, man. Amanda Heaton. Bless you, Amanda. It's good to have you on with us today. Diane Jones, way down in Eudora, Arkansas, is watching. Give uh, Pastor Albert Jones my blessings, uh, Lady Di. Good morning, family, she says, and blessings. Uh, praise the Lord for them. I'll be preaching his pastor and wife's anniversary next month. The Lord say the same down in Eudora, Arkansas. Mm. And then leave there and go on over to Clarksdale, Mississippi. Hey. It's right across the Mississippi River. <laughs> and, and up the way a little piece. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go down and have church with them. All right. We're in the book of Revelation. We're in chapter 9. The last time we had a chance to move around in the book a little bit, we saw some locusts that an angel had been given a key to the bottomless pit. He opened that pit, and these creatures came out of that pit um, that had a strange appearance. They had faces like men, hair like women, uh, mouths and teeth like lions. They had 
tails, a scorpion tails that uh, would hit a man like a stinging of a scorpion. Mm -hmm. And that, they were given uh, to strike men, I think it was for five months. And so they, they, they were not uh, able to do whatever they wanted to do. They were ordered and commanded by God and put, there were some parameters put on them. Mm -hmm. uh, verse five says, and to them was given that they should not kill them, that is man, but that they uh, should be tormented five months. Mm -hmm. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. Now, mm -hmm. we're talking about judgment that's coming from heaven that's being affected on earth. Yeah. Amen. God is judging, and that judgment is falling in the earth upon men who refuse to come away from their sorceries, their witchcraft working, their demon worship, and all of the kinds of things that they had gotten themselves involved in, and... Uh, Refuse to acknowledge their sin. And, 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 and I think that as we really get a hold of um, the grace of God, in 1 John 1, 9, it, it was written for any human being that have come to know the Lord, that if we just confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our Amen. sins. Amen. And then to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But these people are standing in rebellion against God and are not willing to... Um, to acknowledge their sins, so consequently, the the wrath of God continues to flow toward them. Mm -hmm. And these 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 creatures that have been released from the pit, or 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 a strange looking animal. And mm -hmm. Jay Vernon McGee seems to think that they were demon possessed, and they came out of the pit, which means that they came from the heart of the earth, came up out of hell, came upon the ground. Look at the, I want to reread uh, verses 7 through 10 so that you'll get a sense of <clears throat> their shape, what they look like in that sense. Verse 7, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, not uh, really says like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Mm. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails likened to scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And the power was to hurt men five months. My Lord. Man, now I'm telling you. My Lord. It, it's not anything we've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it's not anything that that uh, we could point to and say these creatures have been on the planet before. Now, they try to uh, liken them unto some other kind of bugs that have uh, been on the planet before, but not in the way these things are. These things are, are uh, led by a king. I mean, we're talking creatures that are intelligent in their being and are being led by a demon. Uh, matter of fact, the devil himself, look at verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever read Pilgrim's Progress, you know Pilgrim Ward, Christian Ward with Apollyon, who was Satan incarnate, Satan himself is warned against a Christian in Pilgrim's Progress. And that's who this is. Let me read what J. Vernon McGee has to say about that. These locusts are further differentiated from ordinary locusts as they have a king over them. The locusts have no king. That is general locusts, bugs on the ground. Proverbs 30, 27 this leader is one of the fallen angels, the chief henchman of Satan, he says. He is permitted to lead an invasion of earth for the first time. Notice the word permitted. That's what J. Vernon McGee says. Abaddon means destruction. Apollyon means destroyer. Uh, verse 12. One war is past, and behold... There come two woes more hereafter. So, you know, mm -hmm. when that he came and said, whoa, he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, he gave right. him three woes. Mm -hmm. 
And anytime God repeats anything three times, <laughs> you better, yeah, 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 you get them ears open. <laughs> but, 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 but we'll see that these people are not doing that. They're not doing that. Uh, uh, here's a here's a comment from J. Vernon McGee. He says the first will introduce the last half of the Great Tribulation period, and it had a duration of five months because that's how long the men should be hurt by the uh, stings of these uh, these creatures. And the other thing was, I think that's quite interesting because the third part of the sun didn't shine for a third part of the day. The stars didn't shine for a third part of the night. The moon didn't shine for a third part of the light, night, which means that the temperature in the earth had dropped dramatically. Yeah. If the sun is not shining for a third part of the day, then it affects nature in that way. And then, of course, the green vegetation wasn't going to grow as it needs to because of photosynthesis, the food getting processed for green herbs and that kind of thing, trees and lights and all of that. But the grace of God was demonstrated because he says to these creatures, don't touch any green thing. Don't destroy anything that's green, the leaves or the trees or the grass or any of that. Because the oxygen level, and we've dealt with this before, would be uh, drastically reduced if mm -hmm. all of the green plants and herbs go. Then they'd have to find out how to pump air in the world yeah. because uh, God, in his infinite wisdom, put the balance of nature in the earth in a way that benefited men because the carbon dioxide that we breathe out, green plants take on and when they take on carbon dioxide, they release oxygen. Mm. So that's how we live. Yeah. And the green plants live by what we exhale. Wow. So the balance in the earth has been um, uh, spoken into existence by God. He put it that way. Mm. And so even in the destruction of what's happening on the ground, the wisdom of God is, uh, we saw when the four horsemen of the apocalypse rode that, uh, a, a quarter of humanity was destroyed during the riding of the four horses. Now we see a third of them being affected here and a third of everything else. But the but the gift of God, the grace of God is don't don't destroy anything green. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah. So yeah. in the judgment of God, his mercy and his grace is still being Amen. manifest. Amen. How many you know we, we serve a gracious Amen. God? Amen. Through it all. Amen. We we say <laughs> through it all. Yes, sir. Yeah. And 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 and, and and, and there will be believers on the ground during this time uh, who will not be affected by these creatures because they can only attack people that don't have the mark of the Lord in their forehead. Yeah, right. mm. yeah. He says, don't, don't mess with them. Oh Lord! Oh yeah, Doc. Let me oh, let me Lord. let me back up. You weren't with us. You weren't with us. Uh, <laughs> you don't have the mark. I'll be gone. Be gone. Church, church, be gone. But there'll still be believers on the ground. Be gone, brother. Yeah, 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 Doc. Church, be gone. But there'll be believers on the ground. Yeah. Because they will be those, remember the word that uh, was spoken, uh, who, what are these? Mm -hmm. And, he, yeah, and, right. and, and the, 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 angel, the elders said, these are they that came out of great tribulation. Yeah. So they were the souls of men under the throne. And they, out of great tribulation, they were saved during the tribulation period. Because you got 144,000 prophets on the ground preaching. Yeah. People are believing. Yes. But. They have the mark of God upon them. So these, these creatures have been commanded not to touch them. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, verses 3 and 4. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power. Notice, unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. See that? Yeah. So God is protecting his own even in the midst of judgment that's falling on the earth. And I, I, I many years, I, you know, I've done this for years, and I, you know, I've never had anybody take up the challenge. I, I, I tell people, point out to me how many true born-again believers have been shot down in a drug house, 
or killed at a at Hootie's Roost, some nightclub <laughs> where shooting was going on. To help me, how many true believers have you seen that happen to? Not that believers don't get caught in a crossfire or something yeah. happens and they die. We all some kind of way mm. we gonna leave here. Yeah. But as a rule, you don't have born again believers who love God hanging out in drug houses, getting shot up in drug houses. Yeah, that's right. You just don't. It, yeah. it just that's not where we go. That's not what we do. That's the that's not our meal. Oh, you. That's not the company we keep. Oh Lord. Oh no. And and, and I've never lost that on, that man. challenge. <laughs> never lost it. Because that's not what we do. That's right. <laughs> so the Lord is good. Give a testimony. Huh? I was in the drug house, and they shot everybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't the born again <laughs> believer. <laughs> I, I went back last week, and they were talking about hold up, man. <laughs> you a mess, man. Hold up. <laughs> so that's how it was going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I, I gotta give my testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Dover house, man. <laughs> That was minutes. Yeah, 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 right, 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 right. Give yeah, that testimony. Oh. Verse 11 says, they had a king over them. Mm. And we read that verse. Yeah. Verse 12 says, one war is past, and behold, there come two, two, two woes more hereafter. Yeah. Verse thir verses 13 and 14. Listen at this. And now this is being orchestrated from heaven again. We have to understand that. Uh, God is in control of all of this, even though it may not seem like it, he is. And I'm sure the people on the ground are saying, where is God? Mm. Uh, except the born-again believer knows mm. that God is in control and, and is not, you know, is never going to lose control. He's God Almighty, allowing certain things. And I love the language of the narratives because it helps us to understand that these things are being allowed to happen. Amen. God is in control. Verses 13 and 14. And the sixth angel sounded. These are the, the trumpet judgments. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And you notice that the Euphrates is dried up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it will be. It will be to make way for the war. Yeah, yeah. it the, is dried up already. Oh yeah, oh it'll be water. In, it'll be water in there during this time. <laughs> uh, I, well, I was, well, I saw that on the news. Kind of uh, captured my interest. It should because um, they were saying that the Euphrates and part of Iraq and all those places like what predicted in the Bible that the Euphrates will be dried up. Yeah, Euphrates will be dried up because <clears throat> it'll make way for the kings of the east yeah. to come and make war Lord, yeah. at Jerusalem. Yeah. And, and that's, that's so that's like what I'm saying is we ready for a war or not <laughs> because it's already dried up. Yeah, hey, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we, I, I tell you what, one thing for sure uh, we we ain't ready for this right here the way we're reading because because we still on the ground. Yeah, yeah that, that's the that's the sure bet. We yeah. the, the right. church ain't gone yet. Hey, so. God, be gone. Amen. Yeah, got the be got the church got to be gone for this to happen right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's a good point. That's a good insight because the Euphrates surely, it, and we'll see it as we move through these chapters. Yeah. It's going to be dried up because the army, when Satan is loose, he'll go out and deceive the nations. And that, that river will be dried up so that they can make way for the horsemen to come across wow. to make war. Yeah. And, and, of course, you know the conclusion of that. Yeah. Christ will be yeah. ruling and reigning for, from Jer or at Jerusalem, and he'll just destroy them with the brightness of his coming with the sword yeah. of his mouth. Yeah. In, in, yeah. Yeah. And the text says there'll be blood up to the horse's yeah. bridle. I mean, that's... Uh. That's a bloodbath right yeah. there. Yeah. My Lord. Verses 15 and 16. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I don't, I, no, I don't want to be on the ground when all that takes place. <laughs> and the four angels were loosed, which were, listen to this, I love it, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay, listen to this, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 
200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. Man, I'm telling you, this is incredible because we've already <clears throat> seen earlier where a quarter of the people on the planet were already destroyed. Now we're going to have a third part of those which are left uh, be destroyed. Uh, and so things are things are getting worse. Oh. Things are getting worse. I wrote that down. Two hundred thousand thousand. Yeah, that's two hundred million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a big army. Mm -hmm. Two hundred million. Sand yeah. thousand. You can't wow. number the amount right. of sand. sand thousand, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. millions or billions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's that's saying something. Yeah. And and so these these angels that were loosed have been have been given authority to go and destroy humanity in that way. Yeah. And and they were prepared for such a time as that. Bound in the great river Euphrates and loosed for such a time. And that 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 when we talk about an appointed time, that word is in the Greek text is kairos. It's an appointed time, a kairos time. Not chronos. Chronos uh, is where we get our word chronological from, chronological time. And, and matter of fact, that's where they get the word for watch. A watch is called a chronograph. Mm. And that, that chronological time is an ongoing time from the day that uh, uh, creation started till the time, to the end of time, the consummation of all things. But when something happens at an appointed time, mm -hmm. that is a kairos moment. Mm -hmm. And so these angels were reserved for such a time as this that we're in here in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how God n knew the end from the beginning. He created, and the text says, he rested from all of his labor. Mm -hmm. All means all. all. The end of all things, the consummation of all things, God already knows what that's going to be like. And this thing is unfolding in time, and these angels were, prepar uh, were prepared for this hour, for this day, for this month, and for this year. Mm -hmm. And their job, mm -hmm. their reason for being is to go kill the third part of men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, they're going to rise up. How many... Uh, Pastor James, what you said two hundred thousand thousand. Yeah, that's two hundred million. Two hundred million. million. Okay. My goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. It seemed like a small number, doesn't it? Until <laughs> <laughs> you, to you, you see it. yeah. Wow. That two hundred million is a that's an army right there. That's an army, but th that's what they're leading. Uh, mm -hmm. Verses seventeen and eighteen, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire. And this is how this army is equipped and how they're going to do what they need to do. Breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Mm -hmm. Tough horses. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> tough horses. <laughs> as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued forth or I'm sorry, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Mm -hmm. Now that, that's out of the out of the mouth of the oh, horses. Of they're they're blowing fire, man. <clears throat> that's tough. Yeah. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. So I mean, it, and it's got to be poisonous in some sense uh, to cause men just to die. I mean, it, it's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. But it's the judgment of God. It is the judgment of God that's coming on people on the earth who are not seeing God for who he is, not responding to God in a, in a very positive way, but or standing in rebellion. And instead of them uh, recognizing uh, this divine judgment that's coming on the ground, I'm sure they're explaining it away mm. as just being Mother Nature or some other, you know, uh, 
thing that they can understand with their minds. Mm -hmm. Men in their own minds can come up with reasons why things are happening the way they are mm -hmm. on the ground, as opposed to saying God is judging us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they, you know, and, 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 and men on the ground who are not uh, believers mm -hmm. in God stand and diametrically oppose to God. And we see that happening in the world today. We mm -hmm. see an unfolding. We see a going away of uh, of good sound judgment and doctrine and mores and values are being dissolved and people are doing whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they don't want parameters on their lives. They don't want uh, rules to live by and regulations to live by that make sense. That's good for the uh, communities and for the family systems and for Anything else for individuals. People don't want that. Mm -hmm. They they want to live like they want. I, I heard a, a a person on the news yesterday mention something about, uh, they were talking about the Kansas City kicker, Butker, mm -hmm. and, and the comments that's being made about him. And she was saying, uh, yeah, and that, that Butker who made the statement said he made it at the graduation like he's from the 18th century. Mm. Well, mm. well, the man was espousing values, and it's his opinion, mm. and she had a right to her opinion. Right. But, but, but the thing that caught my ear was she's saying he don't belong in the 21st century. He's somebody from 300 years ago. Well, what that suggests to me is mm. you don't want you don't want uh, more raising values mm. that's been put in the earth by God Almighty mm. for your good. Right, folk, exactly. folk, folk. folk take issue with the things of the Lord as if mm -hmm. God is some kind of cosmic killjoy, don't want men to enjoy their lives, right. don't want men to... Man, it, it, there's a devaluing yeah. of humanity, yeah. human life, and all that. Uh, uh, what's necessary for men to maximize their lives down here on the ground. Mm -hmm. Give me the rules. Give me the regulations. Lord, help me to live within your defined mm -hmm. parameters because mm -hmm. I know it's all for my good. Mm -hmm. It's all to help me to maximize mm -hmm. my life. It's all to help me to be the very best I could ever be and to demonstrate that to other people. But folk don't want that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Folk want to run the other way. Yeah. And I, when Number you three. preached, you talked about the sorceries and people with yes. the, the yes. crystals and mm -hmm. all these kind of things folk are trying to do mm -hmm. in order to uh, maximize their lives mm -hmm. and they're going further and further mm -hmm. away from what God mm -hmm. wants. Go ahead. But you uh, said Brother past, uh, that uh, people try to explain this stuff away you know, yeah. after they see it. So I was thinking geographically when COVID attacked, mm -hmm. it covered the whole earth as yeah, we know it. Be. Right. So I was thinking about the geographical area here. You know, we see, you know, we read about these locals and, and, and how they're affecting yeah. them. It's going to be worldwide. And worldwide. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it's happening in I don't know. I don't know how the construct is going to be in the future, but yeah. if it's happening in Europe and it's happening in the United States, it's happening in China. Yeah, are we talking like, hey man, we got these locusts over here? Yeah, how are you guys handling? I mean, how will we? How will we? Well, uh, if, how will that be? I, I guess the question. Well, I think I think I think you you're onto something because. Right now, communication can be instantaneous mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Everything that we see, know, and understand now is in real time. Mm -hmm. It used to be in the theater of war, mm -hmm. from World War II even. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have to have a, a, a communication that would be affected and letters being sent and all of that. But, but now, oh, when, when yeah. you can see smart bombs being dropped as they drop them right. because uh -huh. we're seeing things in real time. So it you know, communications are going to the to the end that one world ruler can speak to every person mm -hmm. on the planet wow. that have a device, a phone or a television. And even in Africa, back in the bush, they got TVs yes. and phones, cell phones. So when we think about a world ruler, when you know the Antichrist comes mm -hmm. to power, he'll be able to rule over men from one point yeah. because he'll have you know he'll he'll rule the military, he'll rule the the finance, and he'll rule the religion. So oh, he'll yeah. he'll have the world locked up, mm. but he'll be able to communicate with everybody simultaneously. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It won't be like Adolf yes, Hitler, yes, who had big rallies. You know, yeah. thousands of people at rallies. No, 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 no. We're talking worldwide. billions. Worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. worldwide. Exactly what you're saying. And I think that you know people will be able to communicate worldwide. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's not beyond uh, the realm of possibility. 
today, today. even as we speak today, we can talk to people on the other side of the planet. We've been supporting Victor Shibangula for 16 years now, a missionary that, that he and I went to Midwestern Seminary together, supporting a church building, uh, a church planning effort in Zambia. And it used to be where if I wanted to help that missionary venture, I would have to write a letter, send a money order overseas, and it would take weeks for him to get that aid. Mm. I go to Walmart. <laughs> I go to Walmart, go to MoneyGram, yeah. to the money desk, and in 15 seconds mm -hmm. from the time we do that business, that money is in Zambia. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> he don't get it until the next day because, you know, they're ahead of us. But, but uh, hey, Amen. what used to take weeks mm -hmm. and seconds, seconds, they've got assistance Lord, from our Lord. church on the other side of the world. Lord, Lord. Can you imagine that? I mean, it, it's just... So, so many of the things that we're seeing now and unfolding now uh, in the narratives are highly possible today that may not have been so readily apparent years ago. It's, 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 it's available today. Oh, yeah, that's, that's like right. that. You see on the news the other day, I think it's in New York and Denmark or something, that they have a portal. And so the people at New York, they can wave in Denmark, or I think it was Denmark, mm -hmm. and they can see each other through the mm -hmm. portal. So, I mean, like you're saying, uh, even with the WW dot or whatever, this, so this media that we're using and mm -hmm. utilizing simultaneously, yes, it can do it all at one time. Yes. So it's going to be where, I mean, the enemy has a set up where nobody would be missing anything. <laughs> right. And, you know, in that. Right. And that's right. That is the reason why our children, you know, because they got this Facebook, they got this YouTube. And they're turning against one another. And you get to wonder, why are these children so mean? Right, right. Mm. That a person that is 11 years old right. can pick up a gun and kill somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Bullying and, and all and, of that and, kind of and stuff. And all that kind of stuff is right there. It, it is. They can see it. it, it well, this there's, there's so that, many things that yeah. can go into, you know, that kind of behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know. But it's, it's, it's out there. Oh, it's yeah, it is. And well, I heard this minister preach about that one-eyed beast. A one-eyed beast. That one-eyed beast. Yeah. Was that television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, television. Well, story. There, there's something to be said for that. Yeah. The television can be a tool for that can be good. used for the good of humanity. Or uh, the propaganda machine can yeah. use it for, you know, wickedness. wickedness. Because the you ear gate... It. And the eye gate mm -hmm. of the very way oh, that the hearts of mm -hmm. men are being yeah, impacted yeah, and affected. What, what we mm -hmm. see with our eyes and what mm -hmm. we hear with our ears mm -hmm. certainly uh, are channels for stuff to fall in our hearts. Yeah. And when kids are listening to certain kinds of music and, it, and it's just cursing and filth mm -hmm. and talking under people's clothes and all kind of stuff mm -hmm. and women being called all kind of names yeah. and men being called all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and and they become desensitized to yeah. it. And a lot of people just talk like that's normal language. Mm -hmm. Well, it isn't. Uh, it is. It isn't. It is. And that's what I'm saying. You know, you know, that, that, that's, but beyond the pale of orthodoxy mm -hmm. and getting into uh, mores and values that's uh, been, being dissolved mm -hmm. for that, the, the people in the world are creating a world that they don't want. They, yeah. they think they do. Wow. But they don't want it. Wow. They will not want it when it's so corrupt yeah. that I they start know. to say, this stinks. Yeah. This, 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 there's something wrong know. with this. Yeah. You but you're what? so far down the road, oh. you can't come back. That's right. and you know what else they call it? <laughs> Depression. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, there have been depressions before. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They been depressions. Depression. But I'm telling you, mm -hmm. uh, there's there, the beauty in all of that, though. Mm -hmm is the fact that there's a light shining. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the born-again believer has been yeah. filled with light. Yeah. And God has positioned us in the earth for such a time as this. Yeah. And that's why Jesus said, let your light so, so shine, shine before yeah. men yeah. that they may see you a good works and yes. glorify your Father, mm -hmm. which is in heaven, Matthew 5, 16. And then in Philippians 2, 14 and 15, the Apostle Paul wrote, 
the church at Philippi. Mm -hmm. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Mm -hmm. yeah. She might be blameless and harmless to sons of God without rebuke. Mm -hmm. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be here. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush but on a candlestick. So they're giving light unto all that in the house. We are in the world as light. And as yes, waste yes. yours, here yeah. is the way to go. His yeah. name is Jesus. Yeah. And he will transform yes, your yes, life, sir. your yes, situation sir. and circumstance. And there will be folk who will say, I want that. Yeah, yeah. give me that. Why are you so calm in the middle of all this storm we're in? There you go. It ain't me. That's right. Hallelujah. It is the one Amen. that sits on the throne of my heart Amen. and Amen. gives me to be... Uh, steadfast in the face of adversity, yeah. man. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the church. Yeah. And that is the power of yeah. the church. Yeah. And that is the glory of the church. Hallelujah. And the church has been sitting on earth for such a time, or set in the earth for such a time as this. Yeah. And uh, we got to be about our father's yeah. business. Yeah. 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 We, and, and if we don't, then, you know, shame on us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Shame on us. And so he says uh, in verse 19, for their power is in their mouth. Talking about these uh, horses and uh, these angels that have been loosed in the in the, uh, the 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 destruction that's coming as a result of them, and in their tails. That's where their power is. That's how they are hurting and destroying humanity. And in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. And with them, they do hurt. These creatures are unnatural. J. Vernon McGee says these creatures are unnatural and are probably demons or demon control. This is a literal description of them. Newell makes this timely comment. Believe, and you scarcely need any comment. These three plagues are literal. The fire is literal. The smoke is literal. The brimstone is literal. And he says, see Genesis 19. One third of the population of the earth is killed. Previously, one third of nature had been affected. See chapter 8, and we, we talked about that. But mankind had not been touched. If the population of the world is one and a half billion, that was back then. We know we got nine billion, right at nine billion on the planet now. This then would mean 500 million would be slain. Mm. It must be remembered that a fourth part of uh, mankind had been slain under the fourth seal, that is the horseman, the riding of the horseman, uh, chapter 6, verse 8. Mm. This terrible decimation of the earth's population seemed incongruous with all of history until an atomic bell, a bomb rather, fell on Hiroshima, some say, us others say Hiroshima. Uh, since then, men have been using more frightening language than that of Revelation. They now talk of the total annihilation of the earth's inhabitants. One final word concerning these hellish horsemen must suffice. The horsemen do not do the killing. They have only defensive weapons. The horses do the slaying. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The horsemen do not do the killing. The people on the horses don't do the killing. They have only defensive weapons. The horses do the slaying. This is not the jet plane, to be sure. But the analogy is here and should be noted. Wow, man. Verses 20 and 21. Verses 20 and 21. We're almost, we're 1225 here. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues. Listen to this. I want you to hear me. Listen yes, to this. Yes. I hope all y'all is on Facebook and Zoom got your Bibles open. Listen to yes. this. Verses 20 and 21. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yes. yet repented Come on, man. not Come on, man. of the works of their hands. Mm. That they should not worship devils mm. and idols of gold mm. and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, mm. neither repented they of their murders, 
nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Come man. on, man. Come on, man. Can't, I mean, yeah. would not. Listen. This man said he give Shake your fist in the face of God and continue to do what you do it and dare God and anything else to do anything about it. That, I ain't repenting. I'm staying the court. Wow, can you imagine that? Don't want to. And it can. We see people loving silver and gold in this hour that we're living in. They want stuff. That's man. Their whole lives are connected to the stuff that they have. That's why some people are hoarders. That's why their homes are filled with stuff because yeah. they, they their value is connected to how much stuff they have. Yeah. Wow. That's how they value themselves, not whether or not they're children of God, but how much stuff I've accumulated. Somebody said one time the only difference between men and boys is the price of the toys. Oh. <laughs> they can, it, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, but 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 when you go to the dump. There are cars in the dump. There's TVs in the oh, dump. Man, there's man, all man. this stuff. There's cell phones in the dump. There's computers. In, all of this stuff that men covet after is in the dump. It's people That's in where the it dump. all end up at. It's people in the dump. Oh, okay, it's people in the dump. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But how about not temporal things, but eternal no, things? Man. How about valuing things that last forever? How about... Um, running after and chasing after the gifts of God, the glory of God, things that last forever, things that you'll meet in glory. Mm -hmm. the, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, some men's sins go before the judgment mm -hmm. and some men's sins follow after. Nothing. He says, yeah. likewise, some men's good deeds go before the judgment. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and that which is otherwise cannot be hid. In other words, we'll meet our deeds. Mm -hmm. We'll be rewarded for our mm -hmm. labor in the earth. Man, but these folks... It, it, you know, they, they gonna hang on to their stuff, man, and die in it. And say there is no God. And say there is no God. My Lord. Yes. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. They repented mm -hmm. not of their works. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm -mm. Well. Worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and all of that kind of. Neither repented. Mm. That's what, but it's, but what it's we it, do now. It, it's saying, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> Yeah. Said, after all the stuff we read about the horses and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah. Said, even yeah. after all of that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it didn't impact him enough. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> it ain't hurt him. Wow. It ain't got what yeah. hurt him. Well, that's the that's the thing. I mean, it's just they've been blinded. Blinded. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's I what the know. Apostle Paul tells the church at Thessalonica. God should send them strong yes. delusions yes. that they should believe a lie and be damned yes. because they loved not, uh, they had not a love for the truth. Mm -hmm. They didn't love the gospel. They didn't love the truth of who Jesus is. And mm -hmm. they, the deliverance didn't come to them because they rejected the truth mm -hmm. of God's word. And men are doing that in this hour. They're rejecting the reality of who God is and who his son is and the fact that deliverance can come. And not embracing the change of heart that can come by embracing the gospel message. Oh, yeah. Not only that, but the eternality of what can happen in throughout ceaseless ages. We can have it. Yeah. We can have it. All yeah. we have to do is embrace the gospel. But again, I think it calls for, in a large part, for us to be about our father's business right. yeah. and propagating yeah. the gospel. Yes. By, the, by propagate, yeah. I mean spread, by spreading yeah. the gospel yeah. and proclaiming the gospel because there's a segment of this population that we're living in now that God has appointed to life. Yeah. The problem is we don't know who they are. So yeah. we have to go preach to everybody. Amen. Amen. Preach to everybody. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, this is a good time to be alive on the planet. Amen. And as the darker it gets, the brighter the light shine. And and I, I, I used the illustration many years ago, running a revival over at Progressive Baptist Church. Uh, had them turn all the lights out. And I had had, Shirley and I had given them flashlights to all of the people that were in the meeting. And so we turn all the lights out and I asked them to light the lights. When they light the lights, everybody's eyes were going around to the lights that were being lit because... In a dark room, mm -hmm. your eye goes to the light automatically, mm -hmm. even if you strike a match in a corner. Mm -hmm. Every eye will go to that light because mm -hmm. that's the how we're wired. People enjoy light. They, they embrace light in the midst of darkness. So in the middle of all that's taking place and unfolding on the earth right now, we need to be 
uh, be light in a dark place. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the way we do that is by daring to live a set apart life. Mm -hmm. Daring to live according to the principles and precepts of God's yes, word. Sir. Daring in the yeah. face of whatever else is yeah. going on on the yeah. planet to do live it. for do God. It. We got to dare to do that. Right. And if we dare to do it, we'll make a difference in the world. Yeah. And the reason why we're not affecting the world like we ought Come to on. as born again believers because we're not daring to do Jesus. it. We don't have any backbone. We, and we got a whole bunch of mealy oh, mouth, uh, weak Christians in this I hour. Mean, we good. need to stand up and be counted Come on, for preacher. the cause of the kingdom. Yes, sir. We got to back out of here. And I just, <laughs> my <head. laughs> Hallelujah. Tell somebody. Got to tell somebody. I see Janet Tucker has joined us on Facebook. Uh, uh, Erica is. Uh, in the, can't take it with you. Erica says, in the dump, can't take it with you. Uh, Mr. Highway Hot Boy. Uh, Vanessa Outley, my cousin, way down in, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Has joined us on Facebook as well. I thank God for each person that's joined us on Facebook and on Zoom. We're going to have to back on out of here. I think we're about a minute or two over. But thank God for having unlimited Zoom and <laughs> Facebook. Amen. You know, if you, ain't, if you don't have the right package, they'll just shut you off at the end of your 30 minutes. They'll cut you off. You, you're done. So anyway, thank God for all of you who've joined us. Thank God for all of these who are in the studio with us. We appreciate the Lord for the lesson today. Next week, we'll open chapter 10 as we continue our march in the book of Revelation. Uh, be praying for the names that we've lifted up before you, uh, death and dying, sickness and disease and what's going on. It's in the human experience and all of our bodies are wearing out and the clocks are running down. I mean, it's just that simple. But how we live our lives, if it counts for the cause of Christ, uh, we can step from time to eternity with joy in our hearts. Let's pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your precious people. We thank you for these who have come to stand with us as we sought to give a sense of what's happening in the world today in the text and the practical application of it. We ask you, O oh God, to remember them that are uh, struggling because of the death of loved ones and those who are sick in their bodies. And Lord, we ask you to go with us all and stand by us and keep us till we're able to come together again in the strong and in the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. 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 Blessings to each of you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and Zoom today. We'll see you next time. Amen. Let peace Amen. and love be multiplied to you.